whatever you do creatively, always have that ready to show somebody. Right. Because whether you're a dancer or, I don't know, a photographer or something, if someone's like, oh, wow, like, oh, what do you do? And you don't have anything readily available to show them. Mm -hmm. It discredits you, like... Immediately. Immediately. Especially because there's so many free resources and platforms to market yourself. Oh, my God. It's like, if you're not using them, it's like, why would I take you serious? And so it's like, you know, it's funny because being a designer, you hear that a lot. Oh, I'm a designer. Oh, oh wow, awesome. What's your... What's your oh, my website's down right now. But <laughs> how do you not, like... You right. can have a free website. Right. So for me, like... Um, and so it's like, it's funny because, like... What I think I need to do more is like think of when people ask me, I'm, think of what the best way for them to see my work is or the, because it's just, I, I guess it's an abundance mm -hmm. of ways that people people can see my work. I'm yeah. like, all right, what should I show them? Right, 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 right. right, right. What should or I show them? Should oh, I, like, you know what no, I mean? Because, because I have so many ways to show them my work. Mm -hmm. um, I try to like, I don't give people my business card as much anymore. I try to, when I meet them, I plug in my Instagram into there. Yeah, I think that's like the new business card. At least oh, that's yeah, what I think. Oh, yeah, I have Instagram and yeah. then make them follow me. And then that way, it'll come up eventually on your feed and you'll be like, oh my God, that's that girl. I yeah. love her piece. Boom, and like boom, sometimes, boom. sometimes you'll meet someone that's a little bit more traditional and they mm -hmm. still do want to do the whole business card thing, especially if they're like higher up, more of like a director or mm -hmm. something like that. They're going to want a business card. They're probably not on Instagram um, as much as someone that's like new and fresh and is still creating things. Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely still want to have business cards, but... Everyone should be on Instagram, um, especially if you put out content or do anything creative, like she mentioned. And Everyone yourself, should have a website. Have a website. Mm -hmm. Make yourself me make, make yourself memorable business cards yes. too. I use Moo. Uh, they have really great business cards, and you can do. I feel like this is like a paid thing, but it's not. Mm -hmm. They're not paying me. Um, right. But I love Moo because with their business cards, you can do up to fifty cards, and each ones can have a different picture. Mm. That was used to be like my portfolio. Nice. I'd have my. It comes in a really cute tray thing. Show my business cards, like, yep, and I made this. And it's like, um, so it's almost like a mindless way of having a portfolio readily available to yeah. which card do you want? And then yeah, yeah, it becomes yeah. a conversation. Like, I think, um, I don't know, like, but like people like options. Yeah, and you <laughs> find a way to like get people more passionate about your thing. It's mm. how you speak about your thing is how people perceive it. Right. Um, I was talking to Mo the other day about it because sometimes it's like you speak. Yeah, I, I did it. Uh, and yeah, if you like, don't, you don't believe it. Yeah, like I'd rather you, I'd rather yeah. you have a horrible thing, but speak so, so great about it that I'm like, it. oh my god, maybe it's not as horrible as I thought it was. Yeah. Then for you to have a great thing, you're like, yeah, it's kind of what I do, yeah. and I'm like, it's I. That's the first thing. Like, if you don't so. believe it, I don't know how you expect Ex anybody else to. Exactly. Um, I want to go back real quick, just when we're talking about marketing platforms, because uh -huh. you had said sometimes it's hard for me to know what should I show? What should I show my Instagram? Mm -hmm. Should I show my website today? Mm -hmm. I think you should always try to work and do your best to make sure they all consistently uh, represent your product the same way. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been working on lately. Um, I've just been kind of like redoing a lot of my stuff, my branding, um, just trying to make sure that like when you go on my website, all the images are recent mm -hmm. and they're kind of organized the same way that you'll see it on my Instagram mm -hmm. and et cetera. So mm -hmm. that's probably the best thing to do. Um, yeah, I think it's like, for me, it's a, I think social media is, it's a little overwhelming sometimes, but I try to, I'm getting a little bit better at managing it in a way that, I don't know, works for my life. Mm -hmm. Like when I get up, it's like so easy to just scroll and like, instead of scrolling, post, like post and then scroll. Right, yes. Before yeah. you even look at anything, get it out there in the world and then, and then scroll. Mm -hmm. I also try to make my, I've made my life so much easier by finding certain platforms that I can kind of like, intertwine to like like for example if you have a online business if you have a you should you should always have a facebook page mm -hmm. and an instagram yeah um they're, they're it's a lot of people do use one or the other mm -hmm. i have both but i'm not i don't ever use my facebook. yeah i think facebook online. is more of a communication platform more of a way to get feedback I mean, yeah, Instagram has comments too, but I think people look at Instagram more for the aesthetic and to kind of see your portfolio and like, you know, like have yes. your layout images. But with Facebook, mm -hmm. most people use Facebook from a computer. Right. Computers are easier to shop from than a, than, than a than phone, a phone is to shop yeah. from. Not to say that people don't do both. But because Facebook now owns Instagram, which you can do like right, for, for example, what I figured out, you can have, which is shop section, like on my shop, on my... Um, my Instagram. I don't know if you ever seen this. Like sometimes you see, like it looks like a purse, 
where somebody can buy that product. Yes, I've seen you do you it on yours. You have to have mm-hmm. your Instagram. You have to have your Facebook set up for a shop section, and that integrates with the Instagram. Got it. Okay. So it's like you have to have, they both have to, but it, it makes my life so much easier to, boom, set that up, and then press the button. People automatically, it takes you automatically yeah, to the website. Yeah, I've seen it. It has then, like the little indicators, and you'll click, oh, I yep. like the skirt, boom, it'll it tells you the right. price, and then it's you press it, and it takes you straight to the so, website. So well, you can buy that. That's, that's um, And then that makes that makes it easier for me. Also, like with uh, with my website, I found myself a little overwhelmed when people bought things and trying to figure out the whole shipping process of it all. And I think it's just I use this what's called I I use Squarespace for my website, but I um I use this it's called ShipStation, and it um I told like three of my other friend designer friends about it. Um, but I like the fact that it integrates. I don't have to put in any of their information when somebody buys something. It just automatically sends it. And I bought like the little label printer thing and it's just like it's it's about like figuring out ways to make your life easier as you're trying to build a business and finding those ways okay boom print it stick it on it post off is done and so like for me now I guess it's it's always trying to find ways to as I'm growing my business make my load a little a little, little, a little lighter you know so um let's switch gears real quick mm-hmm. so for anybody out there that um is aspiring to be a designer and maybe wants their own um, brand one day, their own mm-hmm. line one day. Let's dissect real quick. What what are the what are the different components to having a fashion line? Um, so I guess first would be you have to have a de- know how to design. You need to know mm-hmm. how to design. Mm-hmm. Either you or somebody on your team needs to know how to design. Mm-hmm. Same thing, you or somebody on your team needs to know how to make the clothes. Mm-hmm. What other things are requ- uh, required to not required, but yeah, what are some other things that you need to? have an actual fashion brand out into the world. Oh my God. Um, I feel like had I known what I was getting myself into, I don't know if I would have done that. <laughs> um, I feel like I always am taking like a crash course in business. Mm-hmm. Every, everything I kind of experience with my line. Um, I think people are afraid to kind of get it out there. Mm-hmm. So I think it's like this idea of like start small. So maybe when I first started, I had a pencil skirt and I had a crop top. Mm-hmm. And I had like five different colors, five different sizes. You know, say, hey, I'll put it out there. Let's see what people think about it. Um, packaging is important. I think you should think about how your product, when that person sees your product and opens it up, what will they think of your brand? Right. Even though I'm the only person who's, who's actually doing it all, no one should know that. No one needs to know. <laughs> take that out. I'm not the only person. Um, no one needs to know how many people are on your team. It shouldn't right. look, shouldn't look any differently right. whether you have 50 people or, or one person. Right. Um, I think uh, if you don't have a lot of content, I think minim- minimalizing is so beautiful. There's something beautiful in simplicity. Right. So if you don't have a lot of content, just put those and presenting it on your website in mm. the best way possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I think consistency is key, so I always have all of my photos taken in the same spot, same area, so that it looks when you're looking at all the photos, they look consistent. Yeah, um, you want. I just think it's a, it's this idea of like presenting yourself in the. You you're not Zara. You're not. You don't have a big company, mm-hmm. but you can still do things that make your company just as legitimate as right. those companies. And one thing you said that you do is that whenever you get an order, you do like a handwritten note. I do. Um, and that's like that's like a personal touch and that's yeah. special. And that makes somebody go, oh shoot, this yeah, person I actually mean, really appreciates that I... Sanji wrote that note. <laughs> that, that, nope, that, not yeah, somebody from my from team. Them, you know what I mean? And I, so, it's, 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 and, and I like, and because I know like, because, and I think I, I always want to be that hands-on because I know, I know when I have repeat customers. Mm-hmm. I know when someone's bought something two or three times and I'm like, Thank you, thank you for shopping again. And they, they know that I know that they, right. they're not just buying something for the right. first time. So that's um, important to let's me. create a list for people. All right, so okay. let's get a pen and paper. So let's say I think the first thing, being an intimate creative person, you need to have a, a an aesthetic, right? Mm-hmm. Like what is you? What is what's the you that you're putting into the art, right? That's I think that's probably one of the most important things because then that's what makes people, what's gonna make them resonate with what you're what you're selling. Mm-hmm. If if it's all over the place, then it's like. I don't know. I think this idea that that people want to buy things, they're kind of buying into you. Right. And maybe you don't necessarily have to be the face of your brand, but what does your brand represent? Right. Uh, I think two, there you go. I think your brand should have a message. I think people definitely, uh, people, what do you call it? 
resonate more with brands that have some sort of message where mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this brand is for the conservative man who um, loves style but doesn't want to mm-hmm. do too much with like print and colors mm-hmm. and you know it's a little more conservative or like you said your brand your girl is comfortable people want to know people want to identify with your product exactly there you go um three i would say maybe the branding the logo the logo and the presentation what is your what is your branding and, and presentation look like what, mm-hmm. what am i going to get when i when i purchase your thing what's going to leave that lasting impression on me mm-hmm. it's like Absolutely. when you when you go to a store like all the biggest what are some of like the biggest like gap yeah, that logo is so iconic yeah. and like you said, Zara and H&M, they all have their own unique identity. That's your brand's identity at the end of the day. So it's like... Keep it legible, something that people can right. read easily. Keep it... Uh, it shouldn't have too many bells and whistles and crazy things. Just something that... I don't know. I think my aesthetic's really clean. So I think it's in a little... Uh, slightly minimalistic. So I guess that's... It's kind of a little biased to say that's what it should be. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that... Um, People should never be trying to like code and figure and out figure what, out what it is. To say. What so I think a rule that I've learned, um, kind of when I was in business school, is that it should be something that could be easily copied. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whether you're put, you're putting a logo on a wall, whether mm-hmm. you're embroidering it in something, whether you're putting it on a T-shirt, it should be able to be easily copied. If it's too complicated and too many lines and designs and too many things, like you said, people have to be like, well, what is this? Exactly. Wrong. So think long and hard about what you want your brand identity to be. What are people seeing when they open that website or? The, the tag on your clothes. Think really long and hard about that. Um, next, I would say, yeah, uh, marketing. So a marketing platform. Uh, we already talked about websites. We talked about Instagram. Um, definitely just do your research and kind of see what else is out there and just do what, what works for you. You know what I mean? There's probably somebody out there that has a successful business selling on LinkedIn. It's, I'm sure it's out there on yeah. Twitter, mm-hmm. whatever. Figure out what works for you, but just make sure that you're marketing yourself on some type of platform. There's just too many things out there. And obviously the traditional way, you can buy ads in newspapers. I mean, there's so many so many ways now to kind of get your product out there that it's like, um, I think social media, like in the world of social media where your product can reach a lot of people for a little bit of money, mm-hmm. it's such a, it's something that I feel like you should definitely take advantage of. Like, I mean, I just bought an ad on Instagram today, $15 for two days and mm-hmm. it'll reach a max of like maybe... Uh, like 35, 4,000 people or something mm-hmm. like that. Like $15 to right. reach 4,000 people. And maybe I won't sell a thing one day. Or maybe right. I'll sell, even if I sell one thing, it'll be way more than $15 right. that I put into it. And that being said, allocate um, money to invest in these things. You want to be able to invest in your in your uh, supplies to create the line and to produce, mm-hmm. but you also want to have money allocated to be able to market and, 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 have, you know, and have paid advertisements, etc. Um, I think the next thing I would add to the list would be, um, uh, like I said, going in when you're first starting something like this, a business, you're not going to have all the money in the world. And you're probably, especially as a designer, you're probably not going to go the manufacturer route. But start looking into and doing research to kind of see, okay, what are some ways, have different options of how you can produce. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I think that, I think along with what you're saying, I think, um, one of the books that I read that kind of like gave me this like I can do it um, I read this book called A Hundred Dollar Startup um, I can't think of the name of the author at the moment but everyone should read that book because it's very inspiring because it's basically this whole idea that you can start a, any kind of startup with a hundred dollars and I think it's more than the amount of money that it is it's about like there's always and that's something that I've, I've taken with me like up until this day there's always something that you can doing Mm -hmm. to better your business um it's not always monetary it's not always something that costs money but there's always because i think people make up an excuse like well i want to be a baker but i don't have this big huge oven that i want okay well for now you got your oven at home Mm -hmm. and maybe it's not the one that you want but it's accessible Mm -hmm. and you can use it for now until you can get to that place where you know i have machines now that i when i first started off i had just like a home sewing (laughs) machine like i And, but, you know, you get to the place where you eventually grow and grow, yeah. but you have to start somewhere. And there's sacrifice involved. So going back to your example about the oven, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, a bigger oven will allow you to produce more, a lot faster. Using a little one that you have in your apartment, you probably got to work and in, 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 in bake and cook for a mm-hmm. lot more hours in order to mm-hmm. get the same quantity. Mm-hmm. But so what? <laughs> Make the sacrifice, you know what I mean? Well, and also it's like, I don't know, there's something that at least I appreciate in the... I don't know in the steps of it all. As much as I wish I had an investor, I love the fact that I, the the first time I did Project Runway, I never had used a industrial sewing machine before. And I oh was wow! Like, okay. 
this is so intimidating. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and it wasn't until afterwards when I bought the bought my sewing machine. And if I, but first, I made everything on my my industrial sewing machine, and then I got a serger, which like stepped my game up. And then now I have a cover stitch, which kind of like finishes my things off better. And so it's like you kind of appreciate, or you really get to. Because when you get to a better place, you knew what the struggle was like. So right. You so you appreciate it a lot it's different. more. different, yeah. Uh, let's see. What would the next step be? Um, we um, talked, so we said marketing. design, mm -hmm. design and aesthetic, pr production, um, marketing, uh, brand and presentation. That's very important. What else? Um, customer service. Customer yeah. service and being able to actually get your products to people yeah. and have them satisfied with it. Because at the end of the day, no business could sustain without oh. satisfied customers. So that's something that, <laughs> like, to this day, I'm, I'm, I'm learning from and getting so much better at. Like, I used to be bad. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, I, it would take me forever sometimes to ship things or somebody would would message me and it would take me forever to reply to mm -hmm. them and, um. I've gotten so much better now. Like I, I have a good, a better rapport with my customers. I ship things off faster. Um, just, just in general, like just kind of using those bad opportunities as a way to kind of okay be better because the re, your your return customer is just as important as the your your first customer. Right. You right. want because the thing is, is I have this one customer who's um, she's bought like maybe five or six different times but each time she's spent like five hundred dollars mm -hmm. like each purchase like she buys a lot of things and so it's like for me you know and that's just as important as a person who bought something for the first time because i want them to come back but had the first time she bought something been a horrible experience she would have never come back to buy anything right. else um right. so you want to make sure you you kind of like having those those that open dialogue with your customer and like when they have issues finding a way to resolve it in a way that Sometimes maybe you didn't necessarily want to do, but hey, this is now I'm not saying completely just go against everything you believe in right, for the right, customer. Right, right. Sometimes when customers are super difficult, they're probably better off not being a customer. Right. Imagine having <laughs> to deal with that person every time they buy something. Right, yeah. It's like, hey, you know what? I, I like for example, I do exchanges only because a lot of the things I'm making from scratch, I don't even like to have to exchange it because right. it's like I still have to make that piece and now I'm dealing with a piece that I now have to sell again. Mm -hmm. But I understand that sometimes, hey, it may not fit the way you want it to. It may mm. not look the way you wanted it to look. So, hey, I'll, I'll exchange it. I don't do returns. But if I had somebody that was a complete nightmare, here, ma'am, take your, your money. Money and go and somewhere I don't, else. And that's know, okay sometimes. And that's okay There used to be this myth, like, the customer is always right. They are not. <laughs> like, yes, yield to the pedestrian, but reasonably. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? But if they're in the middle of the street, hit them. That's yes. Right. So just real quick, <laughs> some tips on how you can uh, enhance your customer service skills. If you're young, especially if you're like probably like in high school still, um, even if you just if you're in college or just graduated, I would say definitely take advantage of working in the retail industry. I think that's probably the best way to start learning about people and just what they want and what their needs are, what their problems are. Um, that probably that's how I learned a lot about like people. I was like, wow, there are certain people that they just want to shop with stuffs on sale and they're pissed that nothing's on sale or that there's no color options or that. Nothing fits them right and stuff like that. So I think that's a good way to... Yes. So I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. I worked in retail uh, for a significant amount of time. I um, I was a manager. So actually the understanding retail, I think, is something that I 1000% like is something that has help, ha is still helping my business um, mm -hmm. between being a retail manager. And, and because I, I used to work for Abercrombie... Um, which I feel like a lot of people did at some point, one mm -hmm. of their brands. But because I work for Abercrombie, like you get to be all kind in every 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 department. So I was like, I did visuals, I did like operations, mm. where I, and I did like, you know, um, the back office stuff. I did every aspect of it, so I understood every part of like running, really, especially right. running a business. There you go. Yeah. Um, and so I think to that, to that degree, it kind of helped me really kind of understand it in a way that just being a fashion designer I wouldn't have understood um and yes you understand customer service and how to deal with people and you know you understand yes people shop when I shop on sale I'm right. <laughs> going to website yeah. so I always have things on sale I always think about I think about price range mm -hmm. and think about the fact that I want to still have things that people can afford whether it doesn't matter what your 
how much money you have in your pockets. I have things for as cheap as 29 and then I have more and more expensive stuff is like 150 Right. But I want to make sure that I don't exclude that customer right. that can't afford my 150 dress. Right. They can they can afford one of my head wraps or a t-shirt or a pair no, of sunglasses. Absolutely. So I'm going to work with Sanji behind the scenes to generate a more structured list for you guys if you want to jump into, um, if you're thinking about jumping into you know that industry and starting your own line. And I'll post a link uh, where you can access that below. Or I'll probably curate and find a resource for you to read more about it. Um, so because we're going to move on. <laughs> um, so... Or, or you can message me and I'll do my best to answer any any questions you have specifically revolving around like starting your own clothing brand or being a fashion designer because I think it's something that I, I kind of wish I knew a little bit more about mm -hmm. when I went to it. I didn't necessarily have a mentor who was a fashion designer who taught me how to be a better fashion designer. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm, I, I surround myself with like a couple of designers that were constantly like, girl, do this or you do that. Oh, I see, I see. And it's like we help each other out but not necessarily somebody that I'm like, has it all together that I'm like kind of learning from. Right, okay. So moving on from that, so what's next for Sanji? Do you see yourself moving into other industries as far as like, like booty and cosmetics? Do you see yourself collaborating with maybe an industry that you're not in? Mm -hmm. Do you see, um, I know you only exist online right now, mm -hmm. do you see yourself opening up a store? What's next for Sanji? Um, I definitely want to do some collaborations. I think I love the idea that um, I don't want to be great at everything. I think there are people who are great at everything, and I'd like the idea of like us putting our minds together mm -hmm. to create something that could be amazing. Um, and so I want to do, I want to sell more products on my site that aren't necessarily mine. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to do, I want to do shoes on my site. Um, I looked up some wholesale things, and, but I really would like the idea to have like a collaboration from an actual shoe designer. But you know, we'll see. Same thing with like accessories, jewelry. Um, I know a girl who does candles, and so I'm kind of thinking about maybe trying to see if I can do a collaboration with a certain scent mm. that would uh, mm. that I could sell on my site. Um, yeah, that that would be fun. actually really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I so. want to do, do some more stuff like that, and then yes, I would love to be in stores. Um, Having my own store is something that like would be like years down the line. I don't. Yeah. I don't think that it's something that I would want to do. I definitely wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> so but there's a huge market. <laughs> there's a huge market of people still shopping online. So oh, I absolutely. feel like you can totally. Just and I think online. even with like being in stores, I think I want to get to a place where my online store is doing so well that I have stores coming to me and being like, yeah, yeah. Or, or when I present it to them, I'm saying, hey, I'm doing so well, mm -hmm. like. My stuff should be in your store because mm -hmm. you'd be one of the only few stores that it's selling at and people are buying it a lot online. So I want to have that leverage when I'm ready to kind of go in stores. Um, so I'm thinking about starting off small, like maybe even like a season or two, even maybe if it's just like having a couple stores in LA that I can kind of keep an eye on, see what people are buying or whatever. No, that's um, awesome. That's but, really, um, really awesome. But yeah, I think that's kind of like the next steps for me. Uh, I want to grow my brand more, but it's, it's hard. I mean, I'm a kind of a one person operation. Um, I had a really good intern in New York, but um, I'm definitely looking for a couple of interns here that people that I can trust. It's hard right. having like being so involved in something and then trying to like hand off responsibilities to other people. To other people. I'm, dealing that, I'm dealing with that right now yeah. myself. So I totally understand. Um, so you kind of, I mean, at some point you have to, you, have you to. can't do everything on your, on your own. But also I think if you're starting off and you're you're an intern somewhere, like if you really want to kind of learn an industry, I think it's just as great as it is to have a resume of a big company. Think of a smaller company right. because you get a lot more hands on experience. Right. Like, my Absolutely. intern, I was like, I don't need you to get me coffee. Right. I need you to make a pattern. Right. I need you to do that. And this. I think I that, that that's to, the thing too. You know, it's like internships. When you get them at big companies, it becomes that. It's yeah. like coffee, da, 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 or you'll get, sometimes you'll get there, you'll get there some days and they don't have anything for you to do. But if you look at a more, like a smaller brand, they're going to have something for you to do. They're going to be more willing to actually really teach you what it is you came to know. So definitely, I would say source that first. Don't get caught up in like, oh, it's Viacom, because that's where I did my internship. And I love my internship. But there were days where I'm like, somebody could be teaching me something yeah. right now. And I kind of wish that I had access someone on a more personal level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Any last minute advice for people that are watching? Just in the sense of if anybody that wants to get into your industry, anyone that may be stuck in their career and just wants to figure out what to do next, any last minute advice? Um, I, I just think life's too short to not be doing something you're not passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's hard. Some days I'm like, 
I think I have rent money. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I can't imagine that I'd be doing anything else. Like yeah. the thought of like going into a job and having someone tell me what to do and working on their time and all those other things just is doesn't just work like, for you. oh my God, I'd rather, I, I don't know what I'd rather be doing. But It's, it's funny because I'm actually wearing a bracelet today that says live what you love. Yeah. This was a birthday gift I got from Mickey actually, oh, really? a good friend of mine. Um, yeah, and I kind of wear it right now to remind myself because sometimes like today I'm really tired. You know what I mean? Because I just had a, 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 gr- a great week, but an exhausting week. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm managing three businesses in a sense. It can get tiring, but things like this that remind me that I'm living what I love, and that's what's more important. And also it. the thought, the idea that, like, you know, I had a, a friend, he was, like, talking about how he was going, he wanted to be an architect. He's like, I can't imagine being working in the same space every day. He was in my studio, and I was like, do you think I work in the studio every day? Like... Like, I had a pop-up shop yesterday. I did a photo shoot the other day. I'm here today. Right. Like, you know, having a business consists of so much more than just yes. being. And I am in my studio a lot. But I think um, no day, no two days are alike, which mm-hmm. I love. You know, yeah. what what's tomorrow's goals is not today's goals. Exactly. And I think that because of that, I get to do so much more than I would if I was just sitting at a desk all day. Absolutely. Okay. I do this. I'm going to do this every episode. It's a trivia game, okay? So here's the here's the catch Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna ask you a question Mm -hmm. right and you just got to give me one answer you can you have one lifeline which means you can facetime any person of your choice (laughs) yep and it has to be but if they don't answer that's it you Uh lost your lifeline so it should be somebody that you know is going to answer and got your back right and you can ask them if you don't know um there is a prize Uh um you have the option of knowing what the prize is in advance but if you ask what the prize is in advance it loses 50 percent of its value gosh okay so that's it that's, okay. So either you can answer it, you get one answer though, and that's it. So if it. the lifeline, can they? If they answer and then it's I just correct, have to ask them and then. Yeah, then you get the prize. Okay. Okay. If um, but you get one guess yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's 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 the catch. Mm-hmm. But we just have fun, so why not? Okay, ready for questions? <laughs> we'll just have fun. We'll just have fun. So serious. <laughs> okay, so my question is, Rihanna, right? I'm big. I I totally believe in. Being multifaceted, I believe in um, evolving your brand to have different ventures. Mm-hmm. I believe in having multiple streams of income, right? Mm-hmm. So, Rihanna, I want you to tell me, it's a multiple choice, which one of these is false? So, we all know Rihanna as a, a recording artist, but mm-hmm. since then, she's come out, she's been out for about like tw- almost like 15 years. It's oh, been a while, right. and mm-hmm. I feel like Rihanna's one artist that's done things that nobody's expected, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And that's one thing that I want to teach in the creators club is evolving as a brand mm-hmm. yeah you came in the game as a fashion designer yeah i came in as a dancer but my brand has grown so much since then and mm-hmm. i want there's so many more things i want to mm-hmm. do and industries i want to learn about so rihanna which one is false a rihanna has a clothing fashion brand b rihanna has beauty and cosmetics brands mm-hmm. a beauty and cosmetic brand mm-hmm. c rihanna has a record label which one is false she does not have a record label um i am a Wait, she doesn't technically have her own clothing line. Um, she has a line for Fenty Puma, which I guess is like her line. So, but I don't think she has her own recording label. I I know Rihanna actually. I don't know her, but I, I know about her. Uh, actually, last night I went to a Rihanna party. Um, I'm a huge Rihanna fan. I think she's absolutely amazing. Okay. I'm gonna go and see that she does not have her own recording label. Wrong. Seriously? They're all true. <laughs> really? So she has Westbury <laughs> Entertainment, which is like a division of a record label. But that was the trick question. That was a trick question. There, they, she has them all. They're like they're that not all. Fair. <laughs> That's not fair. So none, of, like you said, a lot of like you didn't give me D, all of the above. I should have. Or none of the above. You. But yes, the answer is D, all of the above. Rihanna. She has, um, they're not all fully just her companies. It's a lot of like uh, collaborations mm-hmm. or subdivisions of things that exist. But she has ventures in all those industries. And I think that that's awesome. So. I mean, I think that is amazing. And I think you kind of cheated me. But it's, like, <laughs> um. it's all good. We have fun. <laughs> you guys, thanks for watching. I had a great time talking with Sandra today. And thank yes. you for coming. I really, thank really you for appreciate it. Me. How I like to end is with a nice cheers. So I'm cheersing to evolving as a brand and learning and getting into every industry that you're passionate about uh do i have a separate one you do have a separate one um yes i i am going to also chase to passions and constantly going after them and never kind of letting those setbacks or 
those kind of negative experiences stop you from going forward. Love that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm gonna drop some links. If you wanna real quick tell everybody how they can find you online. Um, yes, uh, most importantly, my website, Something by Sanji, S-O-N-J-I-A, please shop. Um, it's a really great website and um, I have great things that are pretty affordable. Um, my Instagram is at Sanji Williams. I also have a Something by Sanji Instagram as well and I have a Sanji Williams page on Facebook. Awesome. So those will all be below as well as all the resources that we mentioned earlier um, where you guys can check that out. If you like this episode, please subscribe. That's the only way to stay updated with what the Creators Club is putting out on a weekly basis. And I want you guys to keep following this journey and learning from all these wonderful people. So thank you until Follow, next time. And like, click that subscribe. like button, share, subscribe, comment. I want to know what you guys are thinking. I want to answer questions here. I want to make sure that what we're discussing is actually relevant and helping you. So let us know. And um, that's all. Thank you. All right, guys. So on my third interview of the day, look three, we are here with Sanji Williams in the house, about to sit down. I'm exhausted. I don't even know how I'm getting through the day, but it's all good because I believe in my vision. So we're going to get through it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> here we go.